Hello, welcome back. This is Deborah Peters for part two of This is Why You Aren't Getting What You Want. The Deborah Peters Show coming at you from Los Angeles. This is your lunchtime tune up, and I'm very much excited to have you join me, Bjorn, from Amsterdam, actually close to Amsterdam, I would think, right? And Mark Elliott and David Silverman, and I've seen we've got a couple other people. Wow, I have a really great show for you guys today. I've been working on this uh, the last few days. And um, Wad uh, Susie, nice to see you, and Tony. Okay, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who tunes in. I feel so blessed to have you take the time out of your day to be a part of this. Hi, Randy Olson, and uh, hey, Antonio, nice to see you. Um, it's a beautiful day. I just went out for a little walk and got some air. The fog is cleared, the sky is blue, the rain has ceased, and uh, I think Los Angeles is returning back to normal. But I'm definitely going to get out on the trails this weekend and do some running. Everything's green and beautiful and lush and, you know, it doesn't last long being in the high desert. So, uh, yeah, I've got some really cool stuff for you guys today. Something I wanted to share with you is... Um, is uh, you know some changes that I've made in my life because as I as I teach this uh, information and these tools, I'm living them. You know, it's not just theory. It's not just something I'm throwing out there that um, you know isn't grounded or centered in anything. It's it's everything I teach all the time, and it's how I live my life. So uh, I come from a place of this is the real deal. It's not just a thought. It's not just a concept in a textbook. This is, this is tangible, pragmatic steps that you can take to create the life that you want to, to create for yourself. Now, look, it's like mid-January, and I see it every year. You know, I used to own a gym. For those of you that aren't aware of this, I used to be in the fitness industry. Hi, Fabrizio from Florence, Italy. You know, I'm going to pause for just a second and say, I've really been missing Italy. I, I love Italy, and I've been to Italy eight times. Um, I did a project there um, for one of the supercar manufacturers out. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the city. Uh, might be like Modena or something like that. Um, hi, Susan. So, um, and Romeo, great to have you. Um, yeah, I love Italy. If you haven't been to Italy, go. I, I spent a few days vacationing in Positano, black sand beach, you guys. You have to, you just have to go to Italy and, and just explore because the different regions are very, very different from each other. And so, yes, I'm going to be um, in Europe in the beginning of March. So a couple of announcements for you guys today too. Some really cool speaking gigs that I've lined up in Europe. So the way I've got things mapping out right now, I'm going to be traversing Europe from two or three different countries. And I'll share that with you here shortly. But before I get into it, um, the thing that I wanted to tell you is that um, I basically started 2019 in November. I really felt like I'm really sensitive to energy and I'm super sensitive to um, other people and what other people's emotions are. Hi, Luigi. So um, I made a decision for myself that uh, coming into 2019, I was going to completely change my relationship dynamics with in terms of the people that I choose to spend time with. Hi, Phil. Thank you for joining us. And um, one of the personality traits that I have realized and come to accept about myself and, and hi, Errol from Jamaica. What time is it in Jamaica? Must be East Coast time. Or maybe are you on the same time as Anguilla where you're four hours ahead? You have to let me know. 
So I, I basically have, have done sort of like house cleaning in terms of the people that I spend time with. Now, intention is a really super powerful tool. And you know this because I've been talking about this episode after episode after episode. And if, if you would like, you can go back into my um, YouTube channel and everything is archived there. I've got about 130 some videos just loaded with repatterning tools for your unconscious mind, loaded with um, different uh, mantras and meditations and pretty much everything it is that you need to reinvent yourself for this year. It's all there for you. And I keep loading up more because I love it. It's what I do. It's what I live for. Hi, Lemuel and Errol. Nice to have you. Um, when I made this decision that I was going to start letting go of um, some people, uh, I set the intention or I set the, um, the focus on bringing in new people. Because you know, here's the thing I want you to be aware of. When you focus on letting something go that's not working for you, you actually draw it closer to you. And um, so I want you to start to train yourself to look away from what you don't like and really start to put your focus in to what you would like to have in your life. And I'm, I have a tool for you today on that very note. Let me just see what do we have for a message here. Um, so we have a message from Libya. Thank you. And uh, Greetings to all of the American people. Blessed, blessed to have you join us. I um, can't read Arabic, so you're going to have to put your English um, name in there. I guess that's a, a language that I haven't yet tackled. So what I started doing is really focusing on creating new relationships and attracting to me the kinds of people that can contribute to whatever it is that I'm creating myself to be. And what that looks like basically is we are all expanding all the time. We can't help it. It's the universe is always expanding. It's just the way it's designed. So if you're not going with that flow of that stream or that river, then you're fighting an uphill battle and you're wearing yourself down. And uh, so focusing on what it is that you want to create actually works really powerfully. So what I decided to do is start focusing on having new relationships and having new people in my life, people that are expansive, people that have open mindsets, people that are um, looking for and creating points of creation in their lives. So, you know, when we initially connect with people, there's points of creation. And sometimes those points of creation are emotional, sometimes they're mental, sometimes it's just you know, physical, um, sometimes it's through business, but, but the points of creation nonetheless are there. And then where relationships go stagnant is if you don't keep creating points of creation. So for example, you know, you can only sit and talk about the past so long and then it becomes old. You know, it's like you sit around and reminisce with your friends and then it becomes old, it becomes stale. You have to go out and you have to create new experiences together, create new memories together, create new sensory based experiences. So what we feel, what we hear, what we see, what we taste, what we smell, what we touch, what we intuit, those are our senses. We are sensory based human beings. And so what I've been doing is I've been actually pulling energy to me of the types of people that I would like to have in my, in my life. And those people have started to show up. It's beautiful. New clients, new friends. I was out with some new friends for dinner last evening 
And it was just, it was like being on a sitcom, you know, when we were talking, it was like one person after the other just contributing to the dialogue. And there was this massive flow and it was expansive. There was no negativity. We weren't talking about other people, which in me, in my mind, anytime you're gossiping or talking about other people, it's just negative and it's pointless. Because when you're criticizing someone else, guess what? You're, you're really picking on yourself. You're really bringing yourself down. Wow, it's been tremendous. I have to say, it's, you know, today's like the middle of the month in January. And there have been some really amazing experiences and people and just a lot of fun times and new clients. So with that, I've got a couple of really amazing announcements for you guys. Um, and first of all, hi, Richard and Travis and Nastic. Nice to have you. And Sylvia, great to have you. And I know I thought I saw something from Susie making a comment here and I can't find it. So hi, Susie McLean from Las Vegas. She's my, my BFF, this girl. She's the nutritionist you want to hook up with. Um, okay, so first off, I have a course starting the week of the 11th of February, and it's the Shift, Change, sorry, my phone is ringing, Shift, Change, and Heal Your Money Story course. Um, we've been working on getting my new website up and rolling, and it's kind of been a bit of a challenge. And so that's my web guy calling, but he'll have to wait. Um, and now my cell phone is gonna blow up. So let me just get that, I'll shut that down. Okay. Um, and then February 22nd, 23rd, I am teaching the Business Accelerator Bootcamp. And that one is live in person in our corporate office in Los Angeles. The Shift, Change, Heal Your Money Story course is online. And I teach that live too, but it's taught over nine modules, whereas the business boot camp is taught over two days in person. So those are filling up really fast, and I have a really cool offer for you. Anyone that is needing a redo in your branding, in the narrative um, about your brand, your value proposition, we just partnered. I just onboarded the most amazing branding agency that you can ever connect to. These guys have written the creative for sitcoms, for television series. They've done narrative and branding for really big brands like Coca-Cola. And now they've created and carved out this whole side of their business that caters to entrepreneurs, small business owners, and mid-sized companies, which is our client base. So we've been negotiating um, a partnership agreement and we have the thing pretty much dialed down. So what I'm doing, anyone that, the first two people that register for the Business Accelerator Bootcamp, I'm giving away an opportunity to sit down with our branding partners and do a two or three hour consultation on your brand. It's like a $4,500 perk. And they'll go through everything with you. Colors, storyline, tone of voice, narrative, shape of your brand, like everything that catches the eye and captures that next client opportunity for you. Now, what else have I got cooking? So my book is, the edits are almost done. I've been getting up at five in the morning and um, writing. And then about 8.30 or 8.45 or so, I shift gears and uh, you know jump into my actual business. So I've been making some massive headway. My goal with this book, I see this book as being like a textbook for how to scale your business and your life. And I see it being taught in, in the post-secondary education system. Now, I've made some traction on that too. So last year, I went to Canada in July, and we started developing a partnership with a college. So if any of you are connected with colleges around the world, um, we're also cultivating one right now with a college in the south of, 
England. So our, our objective here is to partner up with different colleges throughout the world. And I go in and I teach the Business Accelerator Bootcamp and the college markets the program to the business community, the established businesses, and they, they bring folks in and we just have an amazing time together. So last year I was in Alberta and I did a one day class and it was a huge hit. Um, and I'm going back in May, only this time we're doing a three day boot camp. So with this book that I'm finishing up, I'm about to go on a speaking tour. And I just got booked to speak at NASDAQ in London. And then I'm going from NASDAQ to Amsterdam to speak at the Global Women's Economic Forum. Uh, from there, I'm going to Antwerp to meet with a new business partner for our European function. And then I'm going to Cannes, the south of France, to speak at a conference there. So. I suspect for a large chunk of the month of March, I'm going to be abroad, which suits me just fine. Um, I'm a bit of a nomad. I like to wander around the planet and do business and meet new people. Hi, Jimmy. Um, I make a difference. I believe that by helping businesses thrive, that everyone thrives. If you're a business owner and you're growing and scaling a business, and you're doing well because I've worked with you, you're going to go home a happy person. And then your family's gonna be happy, your kids are gonna be happy, you're gonna to contribute to your schools, you're gonna build your, your community, the economy gets better. I really believe that the backbone of this next economic growth across the planet is coming from entrepreneurs and small business owners. So that's, all my good news, and now I wanted to dig into some tools for today. Part two, this is why you are not getting what you want. And it has everything to do with the unconscious mind. Now in the last episode, I talked about this pretty in depth, right? I talked about the difference between the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, and the super conscious mind and how all of that flows together, and sometimes how it contradicts itself, or shall I say how we resist the flow of that interaction between the conscious, the unconscious, and the superconscious. So let me just lay it out there this way. You can absolutely be, do, and have anything, and I mean anything, the only thing that keeps you from being, doing, and, and it is in that order, by the way, the only thing that keeps you from being, doing, and having whatever it is you're seeking is because your unconscious mind or subconscious is also, I, I call it unconscious for a reason. And the reason I call it unconscious is because it's the part of our mind that we're typically unaware of. But in mainstream circles, it's called the subconscious. So you can, you can interchange the two, okay? So if the, with the unconscious mind, it blocks you. Now, its sole purpose is to maintain whatever it's been programmed to believe. And so if you have programmed your unconscious to believe certain things about yourself, about the world, about your place in the world, about the possibilities of yourself, about the possibilities of your life, about the possibilities of you in the world. Whatever you have programmed and conditioned your unconscious mind to believe and accept is what it will strive to maintain. And so when you start reaching for something greater, or you start reaching for something bigger or more money or better health or a better body or whatever it is you're seeking, your unconscious mind will calibrate that and it will decide if you can actually have it. And it doesn't, how do I say this? It's not like it's um, purposefully holding you back, but it is holding you back right? Hi, Ray. 
and Ted and Robert, nice to have you join us. Um, so we're talking about how the unconscious or the subconscious mind and the programming that it has been given and taught is actually our greatest enemy or, and it can be our greatest champion. So let me just kind of break this down for you. Um, essentially what happens is if you, if you go back and you watch my episode from Tuesday, part one, I talked about how the unconscious mind gets patterned between zero and seven years old. Zero being in utero, you know, the parents, the mother, the environment, the thinking, especially the feelings that are going on within the, the marriage or the relationship or the environment. This all gets programmed into the psychosis of the child. Hi, Maurizio. Um, so then that's from that point to age seven, we're pretty much in, we're like a sponge, you know, in terms of learning, we just take it all in and take it all in and take it all in. And we really don't question it. Um, it's like the theta learning state. It's like the theta function of the mind. It just sucks up everything, parental beliefs, values, emotions, um, relationship dynamics, um, environmental dynamics, everything from poverty to prosperity. So with that program running, and because you, you were young and you, you were a sponge and it's just the way you're designed, you, there's really no um, separation between who you see yourself to be and your parents. So you, you're kind of like little mini-me's, you know, you're, you, you, you take on everything your parents throw at you. And they're throwing at you either consciously or unconsciously. I know families that very specifically decide we're going to raise our children in this religion or this belief system or this prejudice or this racism or whatever model of the world they happen to be functioning in. And then the child grows up to be an adult that carries that belief system through and lives it out in their lives. And all of this takes place unconsciously or subconsciously. And can you see now why I call it unconscious? Because we're really kind of unconscious of it. Like we're not really aware that this is what we're doing until one day we think to ourselves, wow, I want to have that car or that house or that guy or that girl or those trips or that lifestyle. How come they have it and I don't have it? And in that moment, you have a choice. You can say, well, they have it and I don't have it because I'm not worthy. I don't deserve it. They're crooks. Um, they cheat people. Um, it was handed to them on a silver platter. Like that's the whole victim story. And I know a lot of people run that story. It's you, all you have to do is listen to the news, go on Facebook. It's everywhere. You know, you can go hang out with your family and they're all sitting around talking about other people and what crooks they are and how they have life so much better and they've taken advantage of the system and they don't have to pay taxes or whatever their bullshit is, you know, cause it's just bullshit, right? The flip side of that is you can look at those people and go, well, if they can have it, so can I. And I'm curious, curious, right? I'm curious, what it was that they thought to create that. I'm curious what it is they know to create that. I'm curious what it is they do to create that. I'm curious what kind of relationships they have to create that. Like that's a different kind of questioning. In fact, that is questioning. Whereas the victim side is just blame. It's just the blame game. So when you get into the questioning side of things, then the answers start to come. And 
Look, I'm not immune to it. I'm a human being. I catch myself making excuses as well. Um, but I have the tools so then I can interchange the excuse with a question. And it's the quality of your questions that are going to be what makes you step higher in life. When all of this is going on, if you have an unconscious pattern that says you can't have that because you were taught between zero and seven that this isn't a possibility, that this is this is bad or wrong or there's judgment or there's something going on negative about it. Your unconscious mind, as soon as you start to step beyond your reality, your unconscious mind is good. It's like, you know, it's like when you're driving a car down the road and now they've got these, these alerts on them that if you, if you, if you move out of the lane, it starts to create the sounds like ding, 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 you know, to get you back between the lines. Well, that's kind of what your unconscious mind does is gets you back into the box that you've been functioning in all, all of your life. And it keeps you from actually going to the next level and the next level and the next level and the next level. And we were talking about this at dinner last night. You know, it's the crab theory, right? You guys all know the crab theory? Hello, anybody out there? <laughs> Do you know the crab theory? The crab theory is when you have a bunch of crabs in a pot and one crab is on his way out of the pot and the other crabs reach up and pull them back down in. So the crab theory you, you could do with yourself. Hi, Bernard from Germany. Nice to have you. And Syed, nice to see you. Um, how's Hamburg, Bernard Kramer? Nice to have you on here today. And um, so we do the crab theory with ourselves, actually. We don't really need to have anybody outside of us hold us back. Because because we do it, we really do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves with our thinking. We do it to ourselves with the feelings we allow to roll around in our mind and our body. Um, we do it with our self-talk. We do it with alcohol, drugs, laziness, food, television, you know, getting caught up in, in relationships, like whatever. We do it to ourselves. So... The thing of it is, is that you can repattern your unconscious mind so that it actually creates more space. It creates more, um, what word do I want to use? It creates, I'm going to use it again because it keeps, I keep saying it in my mind. It creates more space. So where you're not constantly hammering on yourself about how something's not possible or the world sucks or the economy's bad or the politics are ruining your life, whatever your game is, you, 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 can, you can actually repattern your unconscious mind to create more space between those thoughts so then the possibility thinking can get in and actually help you repattern yourself. And so um, where your unconscious mind really is running the show and it's um, attracting whatever currently resonates with who you're being. So if you're being um, negative, it will, it will confine you to experiences that are reflecting back to you, that negativity. Um, so I thought I would give you some ex an exercise, at the very least one that you can begin to repattern that. And you can use this in your teams and your company. Don't just keep this to yourself. Like go to your teams, when you, the teams that you're leading and when you're making decisions in your business, actually, and you can actually use this with your clients. I talk to people all day long about scaling their business and I'm always hearing their excuses about why they can't do something. So I use this tool with them because when I'm speaking with them, helping them shift into a new reality in the moment is going to be the key to the success around the business coaching that we're actually doing. Hi, Leo from Dubai. Nice to have you join us. Wow. I seriously have the United Nations happening here. I have people from everywhere, Canada, the Middle East, California, 
Germany, Dubai. Who else have I got? I got to have a look. Um, Italy, Spain, France. Wow. You guys are awesome. So the thing is, is that it can totally be repatterned. And this is the part that I love because nothing is static. And this is why I say the caste system is dead because I believe the caste system began and, and existed only in our mind. When we think we can't be, do, or have something because of where we're born, the color of our skin, um, the, the socioeconomic situation we're born into, um, you know, who our parents know or don't know, or don't have any connections, like all of that, you guys, it's just storyline. It's just how your unconscious mind keeps you calibrated to your current existence. So the key to this is repetition. So from zero to seven, kids really don't need repetition to accept something as reality. They can see it once and they can go, okay, that's the way it is. Cause that, you know, so I, so this authority figure in my life is teaching me and you know, forgive me. I don't mean to be bashing on our parents cause we can realize that they did the best with the resources they had. But if they're limited, then of course they're going to be raising their children from a place of limitation because it's all they know. Right? Um, so, with the caste system, it's self-imposed. And I invite you to actually take yourself beyond your caste system, because that's really where it's gonna start, and that's really where the change is going to take place. Now, this actually works in our thoughts, our emotions, and our beliefs, because they have a direct impact on our body's electrical current. They can actually shut, that's how we get unhealthy. I had a conversation last night with someone that just got diagnosed with a terminal disease. And um, I had this very conversation with him. I said, you know, it's time for you to start programming yourself in a new way. He said, yeah, I, I typically watch the news for two or three hours every night. I said, well, stop it. <laughs> stop putting all that crap into your mind. Go do something that inspires you. Go have fun. Like I asked him this question, what's the one thing that you used to do that always made you happy? And he said, well, I used to dance, ballroom dancing. I'm like, well, get out there. You know, that's my prescription to you. Go ballroom dancing two, three times a week and start smiling again and shut the bloody news off, please. Okay, so... Um, this happens um, in going to the gym. I used to own a gym and beginning of January, the place was so flipping packed, you couldn't move. By March, it was half empty and by April, we were right back to our regulars. So, it, you know, when we're starting a new habit, repetition is really the key. Now, you've probably heard it said that it takes 21 days to change or make a habit come into play. And actually, it's erroneous. It takes somewhere between three, seven, and 21 repetitions. Now, if that's one repetition a day, it could take up to 21 days. But three, seven, 21 repetitions, and poof, you have a whole new reality. So keep exercising what I teach you. And every time the negativity and the fear and the doubt and the lack come up and challenge you, use these exercises and reframe, ask new questions, create new habits, do new actions and have new self-talk and stay in that process. Um, it also happens with relationships, you know, where we might meet someone that is like the person of our dreams and they have all of the qualities that we've always wanted in a partner and they're outside of our comfort zone. Like it would mean that we would have to grow. We would have to up level ourselves to have it work. And they refuse to come down to our vibrational level because they've already gone through all of that and they're not willing. And why should they? 
go backwards in their lives and try to re-experience something because it'll kill that person. Like if you, I, I would ask you to test this out. You know, if you try to go back to an old way of being, once you know better, you it's impossible. You know, once you know something, you cannot unknow it. Okay. And if you try to, you'll make yourself ill. You will seriously cut off the flow of homeostasis through your body. Um, it also happens in terms of happiness, money. You know, once you know you can create and receive larger sums of money, going back to living and being without it is really painful because we've expanded our neural networks. We've expanded our capacity for receiving. So I want to give you a little exercise that you can use to start to get in touch with how you're actually um, relating to yourself around this. And then you can start to break some patterns. So in the next show, what I'll do is I'll, I'll teach you how to break the patterns. But hi, Chris Husseini. Nice to see you. Um, what side of the country are you on today or the planet, I should say? Um, so first step is you need to learn to get in touch with what's going on inside. And that's why I say know yourself, get to know yourself, cultivate a really strong and deep relationship with yourself. Because with that set, then I can show you tools to actually repattern stuff that's blocking you, right? First, we have to identify what the blocks are. And then I can show you how to actually repattern it. So I want you to do a little test for me. And you're going to do this standing up. Wherever you are in the world, if you're, unless of course you're driving your car, um, I want you to just stand up for a moment, put everything down, put your, you know, if, you've, if you're watching me on your phone, like set your phone up against something so it's self-supported and then I want you to stand up. And as you're standing, we're gonna do what's called the sway test. So first of all, we're gonna calibrate so calibrate meaning give you an understanding of the difference between how a yes feels in your body and how a no feels in your body. So essentially, hi Frank, um, a yes will always make you feel lighter and a no will typically always make you feel heavier. So standing up, I just want you to get a sense, like connect into your body and I want you to think the word yes. Just think it, just over and over and over in your mind. Just say yes, 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 yes. And then I want you to ask your body to show you a yes. And when you say that to yourself, hello, Frank, notice what your body does. Which direction does your body sway? Usually it'll sway forward a little bit, but everybody's different. It might sway to one side, it might sway back. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just ask your body to show you a yes, and then watch the direction that your body sways. Feel it. Get a sense of what it feels like to be in your body when you're experiencing a yes. Now, if this is a little challenging, we can, re we can calibrate it another way where you can say to yourself, whatever your name is or whatever city you live in or whatever color your hair is, you know, pick something that is an absolute true-ism. You know, the sun comes up in the east every day. Um, so say that to yourself and then feel that yes, in your body because that's a truism and that will give you a calibration point of what it feels like when you know that something is true now you can just clear that break your state and now i want you to think of a no and i want you to ask yourself no what does a no feel like in my body? And you can even say the word, no, 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 right? And just do it until you get like that sway in a different direction. So now what you have is you have real good clarity on what a yes is 
and you have really good clarity on what a no is. And this is basically called calibrating. Now you have a tool that you can use in everything that you do in life. Because here's the deal. The number one key to success, you guys, is trusting yourself. No matter what anybody says, no matter what circumstances look like around you, no matter what fear other people might try to talk you out of something because they have fear on it and they're projecting that fear, like whatever it is, doesn't matter. Learning to trust yourself is the number one key to success. And if you're ever confused because you have people pushing at you, because you have an entire society demanding from you, because you have a culture that says you have to do things a certain way or you're wrong, or maybe you have a family that's telling you it has to be done this way or they won't love you, whatever, whatever, that noise sometimes can get in the way of honoring yourself and listening to yourself and trusting yourself. So this little calibration tool, hi Lynn, you can use this tool any day, all day long. And you can ask yourself, okay, tell me about this situation. Can this person be trusted? Should I sign this deal? Is this the right amount for me to be accepting in this deal? You can use this for everything. And so I just want to leave that with you because I'd like you to actually get into the habit of practicing this. I want you to practice this every day until our next show, which is on Tuesday. And then I'm going to show you how to actually identify through this process the limiting beliefs that are blocking you in your unconscious mind that are keeping you from being more, having more, doing more, receiving more health, wealth, love, vibrancy, whatever it is that you would like your 2019 to be. And I think that pretty much covers it. So you can let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to be addressing in these shows. And remember the Shift Change Heal Your Money Story course is starting in February and it's an online class. And I'm gonna to be touring around Europe, speaking at events and conferences. I know that you can buy tickets to the Global Women's Economic Forum in Amsterdam. Um, and I know you can buy tickets to the real estate event that's in Cannes. I'll have more details for you on that. Uh, unfortunately, the NASDAQ event is a private uh, contract, so I can't do anything for you there. But um, if there's somewhere that you would like me to speak at a, a business group, at your company, while I'm, I'm moving around Europe for the next, uh, for those first few weeks of the month of March, let me know and we can put something together for your organization. Maybe you need your annual strategic plan put together and you haven't done that yet. All right, guys, thank you so much. I truly am blessed to have you be a part of this twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays at 1230. And I will upload the recording onto my YouTube channel, which is Neuroengineering Institute. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for all your comments. Thank you for sharing this with your tribe. Let's do this. Let's triple the numbers next week. So invite people, okay? And, and um, I've got a couple groups here on Facebook you might be interested in. Uh, Friends of Neuroengineering Institute and Shift Change, uh, sorry, uh, Scale Up, your business, your relationships, your money, and yourself. So definitely join me over there. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. And my Instagram is NEI, the number four, change. All right, guys, have a blessed weekend. Go have some fun laugh, play, enjoy life. And uh, I'll see you guys all back here on Tuesday and practice that sway technique. I'd be wanting to hear all about it. All right, take care. Bye.